Hello everyone and welcome to the Power BI Desktop March 2019 update. Let's go ahead and get started and take a look at all the great features releasing this month. So first on our list, let's take a look at the reporting features. One of our top requests on user voice is to improve the single select behavior of slicers. So this month we are doing just that. Here we have a slicer with single select mode on. You'll notice that we've revamped the single select UI to support radio buttons. Additionally, you'll see that if you switch to the drop down layout, the selection feels much more quicker because you don't have to close the drop down each time you make a selection. Another highly requested feature is being released this month, which is the heat map support for Bing Maps. Here in our report, we have the default version of the Bing Map visual. Now let's take a look how we can update it to a heat map. So in the formatting setting, make sure heat map is on. And then you'll see that we have a bunch of customizations here. Let's go ahead and change the radius to make it slightly larger. And we can modify the transparency here. Additionally, if we want, we can change how we want the color scheme to be. So let's change the 100% gradient to this dark red and the 50% to this lighter shade of red and finally the 0% to this very light shade of red. The next update on our list is super simple but very useful is the ability to cross highlight using access labels. This feature is especially useful when you have a category that might have a really small area that it's hard to click on. So if I click on board games or cell phone and accessories, it's a larger area for me to cross highlight based on this value. Additionally, it's helpful if a category is broken down by another series in a legend that lets you select all the values. For example, if I just select Canada or Great Britain, I select all the values that are in the large, medium, and small of the sale size. Next on our list is a formatting update which now allows you to format the default tooltip for each visual in your report. Here in our report, you'll see the default tooltip format, and let's go ahead and change that in the formatting pane. You'll see a section called tooltip. If you click on there, make sure the type is default, and you can change the label and the value colors. So let's darken them, and let's modify the text size and font family and let's change the background color. Let's take a look what we have so far. Uh, we can also tweak the transparency if we'd like. Additionally, with the formatting update, you can control the tooltip format as part of your report theme. Here's a JSON I created, which I'll then import, and now all my tooltips are formatted the same across my entire report. Our next update allows you to add web page URL links for buttons, shapes, and images within your report. In this report, I've set up a help button to take my end users to the Power BI support page. So to do so, under the action tab, I'll select web URL as the type, and then I'll paste in the URL of the support page. And finally, I have the option of adding a tooltip so that when my users hover over the button, they'll know where it's gonna redirect them to. Next, we have a small but useful filter pane improvement. Based on a lot of customer feedback, we've simplified the experience for the end users by no longer allowing them to delete a filter card, uh, but rather just clear it. And this is so that they don't end up in a state where they cannot fix themselves. The next update on our list is a global report setting. This setting allows you to choose whether you want to align the canvas to the top of the wallpaper or in the center of the wallpaper. The setting can be found in File, Options and Settings, select Options, and then select Report Settings under Global, and then select Align to Canvas at the top. Please note that this will only work for new reports going forward. So when I open up a new report, you'll see that here my canvas now is aligned to the top. Next, we've added a couple of improvements to the selection pane. Using shift-click or control-click, 
I can quickly select many elements and control the visibility altogether. Additionally, I can double click on an element and rename it so it can help me identify the element later. The last update in our reporting section is that you can now use the keyboard navigation to control data points within majority of built-in visuals. Once you have a visual in focus, you can press control right arrow to move the focus inside the visual. Once you have the focus inside the visual, you can move between the access, data points, and legend. Then you can also press enter to navigate within those elements. And we can move to the data points and then they do the same thing. Another cool thing you can do is press shift F10 to open up the context menu. So let's go down to exclude and we can exclude this region all using just keyboard navigation. Moving to our next section, which is the analytics section, First on our list, we have some improvements coming from Q&A recommendations. The improvements help when there are misspellings or when ambiguity is introduced. In this example, I'm going to terribly misspell products. Now let's see if Q&A is able to pick this up. So we look and it says, did you mean products? Yes, that was correct. Now in my next example, I'm going to introduce some ambiguity and let's see what Q&A recommends. So you see here there's two manufacturer fields, uh, but now product manufacturer is the one that I want. Now the last update in our analytics section is that show dates as hierarchy is now generally available. Now looking at our fields list, we see that each date column we have, we can now show each hierarchy level in the fields list. So we see year, quarter, month, and day, and year, quarter, month, and day. Under modeling this month, the first feature on our list is that we are very excited to announce our new modeling view is now generally available. If you haven't been keeping up the, during the preview period of our new modeling view, we've been adding a lot of new features based off of your feedback. And uh, based off of all that feedback, we feel like we've improved the view far enough along that we are now making it generally available. So everyone will see this new view. You'll see on the left here where you can switch your view from the report to uh, the data view and the modeling view. You now, now only have the new view as an option. You can tell it's the new one because it has this little star next to it. Um, and some of the highlights of this new surface include multiple diagram layouts. So you can see here I see all of the tables of my model and I can switch to the simple view and see only these two because I have chosen to um, remove from the diagram the other tables of this model. So this is really useful whenever you have a very large model of hundreds of tables. It helps to create segments of the model for easier management. Another nice feature of this new view is that right here in the view, you can choose to select a field or a table and edit the properties of it in this properties pane. Uh, you can you know, change the name, you can change the add synonyms, change the data type, decide if it's hidden or not, um, and even create display folders, which is another nice feature of this view. So you can see here I have a category folder to hold my category and subcategory fields. You can also bulk edit fields as well here. So if I multi-select several of my product related fields, I can choose to uh, put them all under the same display folder. So if I made a product folder, I bulk edited them all and now there's a product folder created with all four of those fields available. And of course any changes you make here are going to be respected in the other views, the data view and the uh, report view. We also have some DAX updates this month. The one I'm most excited about is some new uh, DAX functions called contain string and contain string exact, will, which will return a Boolean value to you, letting you know if a text field contains a specific string or not. Um, and contain string exact is case sensitive. Another new function this month is the distinct count no blank, which returns a SQL-like distinct count where blank values aren't counted.
we've also extended the lookup value function to now take an optional last parameter to avoid raising an error. And lastly, we've also extended the all function so that the all function without arguments will clear all filters in the filter context. You also have IntelliSense support for all of these functions except for the all updates and the new distinct count no blank function. Both of those will come IntelliSense wise in our April release. Under custom visuals, the first feature is some new controls for admins related to certified custom visuals. We're now giving IT admins more control over the usage of custom visuals in their organization. With this new admin control setting enabled, users can view and use reports containing certified custom visuals only. So if the report included an uncertified visual, it won't render. And instead, it will show a uh, error message. This setting won't affect organizational visuals though, as those were handpicked by the admin and allowed by the admin. So this setting will only affect uncertified custom visuals that the user pulled from either the marketplace or private visuals that were uploaded using the import from file. For this setting to also apply to Power BI Desktop, the admin will need to use a group policy to enforce it. To get the exact group policy definition, you can check out the blog. There's a table in there that will uh, have all the specifics for the group policy. The first new custom visual for this month is the Kradec regression chart, which lets you plot your data in a scatter plot, uh, add a linear regression to it, and then also split it out into multiple categories as a small multiple. If we switch over to the sample to explore it, you'll see in this first simple example, they plotted on the x-axis engine size and the y-axis CO2 emissions, and they added a unique identifier to plot each of the individual points on the scatter chart. And then the uh, turbo com compressor is the subgroup, which translates to the, ca the categories on the, leg on the legend here. And then you can see there are two lines here, which is the uh, linear regression for each of the categories on this chart, both the green and the navy colored one. And you can see the colors match. So you can map the two together. If we switch over to the second page, there's a little more advanced version of it where they've also choose to, um, ex to extend that visual by breaking it all out by this NOF gears. And so now the visual is rendering as a small multiple. This visual can handle a lot of data at once because it's also taking advantage of dynamic data loading and it has tons of formatting features. You can do a lot of things like control the appearance of the visual, including the point size, the width of the line, font sizes. You can choose to add a legend or not for each of the visuals within the small multiple. Um, and again, you have lots of controls within there. What included is included as part of the legend. You can also, for the small multiple, uh, choose things like the direction, the type of grid, number of rows per in the grid, labeling. You can even choose to have a common x-axis for all of the, the x or y-axis for all the visuals in the small multiple as well. Um, and you can see there's a lot of other options as well, so tons of formatting capabilities. And all of this is offered for free, but there's even more if you pay for a license. So this visual is one of the visuals taking uh, advantage of our in-app purchasing experience for custom visuals. So you can get, if you want, you can get a licensing key for the visual and unlock even more features. For example, in the free version, you can only plot a thousand data points, but if you get the license, you can go all the way up to 30,000, which is our limit for custom visuals. You can also do things like uh, customize the colors. The, uh, the visual will automatically pick colors for you in the free version, but you'll be able to customize those and the opacity for each of the legend groups. And there's some other formatting controls you're going to get with the uh, license as well. The other custom visual this month is the Power Slicer, which is very similar to the default Slicer visual, but has way more advanced layout and formatting support. 
switching over to the sample, you'll see that all of the slicers here are actually the uh, Power Slicer uh, custom visual. It lets you, from all the examples you can see here, change the layout between a list, a drop down, a hierarchy, and even a chiclet layout. You can control the formatting for both the text and the background for unselected and also selected option selections in the visual. And if I go to the formatting pane, you'll see that I can even set the default value for the selection for this custom visual. To do that, you can uh, use JavaScript. I'll, ha I'll put an example of the uh, JavaScript needed to set the default selection for the current month on your, on your screen so that you can get an idea for it. But you'll be able to, using JavaScript, set the selection type. You'll also be able to, in the same section of the formatting pane, switch, like, t like I said, between all the different layout options. You can also control single select and select all in here. You have the formatting control for the items in the list and the title. Um, and of course you get all of the normal formatting controls that you get for any visual in Power BI. So if you're looking for a slicer visual with a little bit more control than our cor current core visual, you can try out this new custom visual. Our last section this month is data connectivity. And the first feature under data connectivity is an update to our PDF connector preview. You'll now be able to see when connecting to a PDF file if you have tables spanning multiple pages. In most cases, you're going to see those tables that span multiple pages. Only one table in the table selector when you're going through the connecting flow. So you'll be able to just import one table for the table spanning multiple pages. For the specifics on what cases are supported for this, make sure to check out the blog for more details. For our second connector, the Intelligent Plants Industrial App Store connector enables Microsoft's powerful analytics and visualizations to be applied to real-time and historical process data. You'll be able to seamlessly integrate plant and corporate data and share with any colleagues on any device, enabling faster, better, real-time decision making. The Industrial App Store Power BI Connector connects to Intelligent, Intelligent Plants Industrial App Store while all data remains securely and safely on-premises. The plant data may be centralized in a corporate data lake or globally dispersed across many sites and historians. Either way, Industrial App Store Power BI Connector brings all of this data together. Lastly, we also have a new Azure Cost Management Connector this month. This connector gives you easy access to your Azure cost and usage data, and with it you can make powerful and flexible reports to understand your spending, spending optimize your usage, and better administer your Azure deployment. This connector currently only supports users on the Microsoft customer agreement, but there is support for more users on the way. That's all for this month. Let us know what you think of all these great features in the comments below. And of course, tune in next month for our next release.